Tropius is a notoriously bad Pokemon competitively, but with its ability Harvest, we can make this thing much more threatening. This Alec Berry gives you a plus one speed boost when consumed at a quarter HP or less. We pair this with Harvest, and when the sun is up, it's a 100% chance to get the berry again. We give the dude Swords Dance, and honestly, Tropius can get out of hand quickly. Alright look, Tropius is one of my favorite all-time Pokemon, but this thing gets absolutely no love. So I'm here to change that today. What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. If you're into this type of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It'll only take you a second, and I promise it'll be worth it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Ariados as I decide to toss out the turtle. I've got a pretty good matchup against a Sticky Web lead because, of course, I can knock this thing down to its sash with a Lava Plume, I can Rapid Spin him away, and overall the turtle's here to have a good time and hotbox the place. So, they're going to go ahead and set up that Sticky Web turn 1 as I decide to go for the Stealth Rock here, able to limit some switches, and Sticky Web is really not good for my team, of course. Uh, this team does rely on the chlorophyll and the sun to be fast and all that sort of stuff. So that's exactly why we want to run the Torkoal here with the Rapid Spin. I figure they might potentially switch here, so I'm actually just going to go for the Lava Plume, thinking potentially Annihilate comes in on a Rapid Spin. However, they do just stay in. This is going to allow me to go for that Lava Plume. And I like Lava Plume for that burn chance, especially if it knocks him down to the Focus Ash. I could get that burn and then end up knocking him out. Unfortunately, no burn here, but that's honestly fine because now I can just go for a rapid spin. Uh, I am poisoned at this point, but honestly, Torkoal is just here to be able to switch in a few times, set up the sun, and just kind of just be the chillest guy around. So, before they go down, they are just going to go for the Sucker Punch here just to get a little bit of chip damage, but I finish them off with a rapid spin, and considering they only have 1 HP, that works out perfectly because I, I get myself uh, rid of that Sticky Web. They can no longer set that up with the Ariados, and we got one Pokemon gone. So... Now on the empty switch, they can bring in whatever they like against the Torkoal here, and that is going to end up being the Infernape. So what's important is looking at their team, they actually do not have a great matchup against the Torkoal here, and that's I actually even have coverage against the Fire type. So Infernape comes in. What I'm actually going to do here is end up switching into the Quagsire. I know I can kind of, I can be decent against the Infernape barring a Grass Knot, and honestly my main objective is to get the Tropius in and try to set this thing up as much as possible. So I bring in the Quagsire, I'm physically defensive, I take a Drain Punch nicely, and um, at this point I basically just want to go for an Earthquake. If they have that Grass Knot, that is fine. I can essentially, like I said, just go into the Tropius and potentially start to set up the shenanigans that our little banana friend has in store. So. I do just go for the Earthquake here for some damage. They do just stay and go for another Drain Punch. Knocks me down to around half. But Buddy is definitely not living a Stab Earthquake from the Quagsire. So, you know, Sire's usually not here to get some damage, but that's honestly fine. I mean, this Quagsire is on this team to lay down spikes and make it easier for the Sweepers in the back. But we will take Infernape uh, being gone all day long. I have a lot of answers to the Infernape regardless, but uh, Quagsire is sitting at about half. And now they decide to go into the Iron Valiant. So... This thing is a little bit of an issue. Anytime you see a Valiant, this thing is obviously going to be a threat. And I decide I'm just going to stay in here. And honestly, I would like to get Tropius in against this thing. So I'm going to go for the Toxic here. And it actually does end up having the Leaf Blade coverage. Does take care of the Quagsire. But that is fine because now we have a Revenge Switch. And it's time to bring in the Beast. Listen, I hope Iron Valiant likes Bananas because he's about to be on the receiving end of some. So here's the thought process. I can go into the Tropius and... I know that I can likely take an attack from this thing and be able to set up a substitute, and I think I can get myself in range to activate the berry. So that's exa exactly what we do. We bring in the Bananasaur, and I'm going to go right for the substitute here. Thinking Spirit Break, probably the, their highest damage output. It is going to go for that Spirit Break, and it brings me down right exactly to the amount of HP I was looking for, which now I can go for the substitute. I can barely have enough to hang on, but most importantly, it's going to activate the Salic Berry. So... It is lunchtime, bitch. We're having a little picnic on the battlefield, and that is going to give me a nice little plus one speed boost. Now, also, since we are in the sun, Harvest is actually going to activate again, and it is a bountiful Harvest today. Tropius has got a nice little full belly, and we get the Salic Berry again. So that gives me plus two speed, and now we're dealing with a fast Tropius, which is hilarious. And also, I'm behind the substitute. So what that's going to do is allow me an opportunity to set up a Swords Dance. If I can get myself... To plus two attack, I'm looking like I've got great coverage against their team. So I go for that Swords Dance here, and with that kind of cushion of the the little plushie in front of me here, I know that they can break the sub, but on the next turn, a Leaf Blade definitely knocks out the Iron Valiant, especially uh, with the Life Orb recoil. So goes for another Spirit Break, does get rid of the Substitute, but honestly, that is totally fine. Tropius has never been so set up at this point, and we're about to give him some Potassium. So the Sunlight does go away, which... 
I uh, gives me a little bit of a less chance to get that Salicberry Harvest, but uh, at this point I've got, you know, doubled speed. So I go for that Leaf Blade, slice his ass up, and give him a little taste of his own medicine. That's for my dude Quagsire right there. I actually do end up harvesting another Salicberry, which is kind of hilarious, because now I've, <laughs> I've had three of these damn things, and Tropius is getting fat as shit over here. So on the Revenge Switch, they're going to go into the Sneasler. Extremely scary Pokemon, one of the kind of biggest breaking Pokemon in the game right now, and uh, unfortunately for them, I am going to be faster. And while I do not have the coverage with Leaf Blade to do enough to knock it out, what I can do is go for my Terra Fire, literally light my, my bananas on fire, and then go for the Terra Blast. Uh, this is supposed to be basically a Fire Terra Blast in the sun for extra damage, but with the Swords Dance, this Sneasler is not going to have a good time taking that regardless. So, literally, we set the Tropius on fire with some candles, and uh, I am, of course, going to be faster because I've had so many damn Salic Berries at this point that people literally underestimate the Tropius. <laughs> like, this thing can be a threat, especially if it gets the setup like this. So, the Terra Blast, I just go ahead and Fire Blast on his ass, and that is going to take care of the Sneasler. And uh, it's not every day you see Tropius able to do stuff like that. I also get another Harvest for pretty much no reason at all, but just to make me, like, even faster. This thing is literally going warp speed at this point. And... <laughs> Now the Revenge Switch is going to be uh, the the Smoke Perp. This thing's about to smoke some Tropius because Fluttermane, even with the booster energy activating its Protosynthesis, giving it a speed boost, I am still faster because I've had like 19 Salic Berries, boy. Uh, so I get that Protosynthesis, and at this point, a plus two Leaf Blade should definitely be able to take this thing out. And we're just out here killing Fluttermanes with the Tropius. This guy is this guy's getting tangled up with the wrong Tropius today, and uh, he's having uh, a bad time. So listen, now they bring in the Annihilate. Annihilate is actually a Pokemon that should be able to take a Leaf Blade if it's got defense investment. Uh, so I go for the Leaf Blade here. They're actually just going to protect. They're, they're like, all right, I got to figure this Tropius out. It's the end. Late, late match. I gotta figure this bastard out. So he's gonna get protected from the Leaf Blade there. Uh, however, I will be fast enough to go ahead and grab another one here. And we're gonna slice him and dice him. Tropius is not quite able to grab the KO there, as I honestly don't really know what my dude's cooking. He probably should have brought this in yeah, immediately. But like I said, people underestimate the Tropius and <laughs> thought they were gonna be able to take care of it. Unfortunately, they finished me off with a Drain Punch after grabbing a little Salic Berry. And this thing's actually at a pretty respectable amount of health, and honestly, Annihilate is a very scary Pokemon. But Tropius absolutely did its job and shined brightly in the sun, uh, and down it goes. So, now I have a switch into whatever I would like. So, my best answer is going to be going back into Torkoal, I can set up the sun again, and that's going to basically open the door for either Charizard or the Victory Bell to come in, outspeed, and then get some big damage. Plus... Uh, Torkoal actually should be able to take an attack from this thing. So I'm just going to go for the Lava Plume. It's worth it to try to get that burn chance, uh, especially in the sun. We're going to get some decent damage. They've already had their Citrus Berry, but they actually end up going for the Terra Fire themselves. That's going to ma make it uh, resist the Lava Plume here. And uh, it's going to come down to, can this Annihilate finish us off here? Torkoal luckily should be able to take attacks, but then it starts going for bulk ups. And Annihilate uh, it can get even scarier if it gets a bulk up here. So luckily, a majority of my attackers are just going to be hitting on the special side regardless. So I go for that Lava Plume, which does like no damage at all. And after some poison, it's looking like this thing's probably going to be able to finish me off with a Drain Punch. But this is exactly why we run max HP and max defense on Torkoal, because even <laughs> Annihilate with the boost is not able to finish me off with that Drain Punch. And Torkoal is honestly a freaking monster at this point. They do get some health back, but I can just get all that back with an Earth Power. And now all I have to do is go down to my poison. But I actually live it on 1 HP. This Torkoal is the, the Torkoal that refuses to die. I, I swear to God. But they finished me off with one more Drain Punch. And finally, my plan can be complete. Because I've got the sun up. Of course, it's going to stick around to have the Heat Rock. Going to stay around for eight turns. Uh, but guess what? All Victory Bell needs is one, baby. I can go in, show this dude what some, some Vine Dining's all about. Take him out to dinner real quick. And that is going to be the end of it. Honestly, a super goofy match, but listen, it's like a once-in-a-lifetime situation being able to get trophies to set up like that, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. Listen, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. The support is greatly appreciated, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.